One of the harder types of questions in binomial distributions is trying to find the number of trials to fulfill a certain condition. So in this case, we, have a f we flip a fair coin n times. So we actually don't know the sample size. So this is a kind of unusual question. Most of the time during binomial distribution questions, you're trying to find the probability. But in this case, you just know a fair coin is flipped n times. And it asks us how many trials are required to guarantee a 99% chance of at least one tail. So there's a lot of information to unpack in this question. So we'll try and you know, slow it down and try to interpret everything as slowly as possible. Let's flip a coin n times. So we know the number of trials is obviously just n, okay? Now, the probability of success of any given trial, we know is one half because we're focusing on tails and well, it doesn't matter if we focus on tails and heads, the probability is the same. Now, in this case, x is greater or equal to 1. So this is n is equal to n, p is equal to 1 half, x is greater or equal to 1 because we want at least one tail flip and want to guarantee a 99% probability of at least one tail flip. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say x is binomially distributed, sample size of n, probability of 1 half. So we're going to just do things in terms of n uh, up until now. Now, what we do from here is we say, okay, the probability of x being greater or equal to 1 is equal to 0 0.99, okay? Hopefully this makes sense. The probability that we have at least one tail being flipped is 0 0.99, and this is according to this distribution, but the only problem is we don't know n. That's what we're actually trying to solve for in this question. So we just have to figure out how we actually do that. Now, we, there's a bit of a problem with x is greater or equal to one, and that problem is, let me just change my color. The problem with x is greater or equal to one is that x is going, well, I guess, if, I guess if we think about the possible values for x, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 and then all the way up until n. So we actually don't know where this inequality stops. So we can't actually evaluate it in terms of n if we leave it in this form. But what we do instead is we just go 1 minus the probability that x is equal to 0. And it actually doesn't matter what n is x is greater or equal to 1 is always just going to be the complement of x is equal to 0 because x is equal to 0 is the only thing missing from that set. And again, that's regardless of what the n value is. It doesn't matter if n is equal to 3, n is equal to 100, it doesn't matter. Probability that x is going to be greater or equal to 1 is always just a complement of x is equal to 0. So that's why I can do 1 minus that probability and that's going to equal the same thing. Sweet. Now this makes it a lot easier because we don't have all these terms here that we have to add up infinitely. This is just one expression that's going to be in terms of n. So what we do in this case is we go one minus and then substitute uh, n is equal to n, p is equal to one half, but this time it's going to be x is equal to zero instead. So if we apply the binomial distribution formula, nc zero multiplied with one half to the power of zero multiplied with one half to the power of n minus zero, which just becomes n that's equal to 0 0.99. NC0 mathematically is one, sorry, there should be one. One half to the power of zero is one as well. So all we're left with is one minus one half to the power of N, which is equal to 0 0.99. And from here, I can just solve it on my calculator. So I'm just gonna flip over to my calculator and show you how to do this one. It's pretty easy, we just type it in pretty much. One minus one half to the power of N is equal to 0 0.99. And I'm just going to solve for n. So I get n is equal to that. I mean, that's pretty useless in this case. Go n is equal to 6.64. So let's go n is equal to 6.64 mathematically. But in all cases, even if this decimal was less than 0 0.5, we would have to round it up to n is equal to seven trials for 99% guarantee, whatever. But the reason why we always round up, even if this was 6.2, 6.1, whatever, if it was less than uh, 0.5 a decimal, we still have to round up because of this word here. We want to guarantee a 99% chance. So if we want to guarantee a 99% chance, we would always have to round upwards because if we round it downwards, let's say if we round it down to six, what would happen is this probability would be less than uh, 0 0.99. And I can show that with the binomial distribution on the calculator. And this is actually a good way of showing you how the binomial distribution works on the calculator. So I go distributions, discrete binomial CDF. If I go a lower bound of one, upper bound of six, that's the same as saying, I use a different color to make it stand out. That's the same as saying probability that X is greater or equal to one. 
but obviously that's capped at six anyway, so that's why I put my up and down to six. And if the probability of success is one half, you're gonna see that this is less than 0 0.99. But if I make it seven instead, what's going to happen is it guarantees a 99% probability with obviously a probability that's greater uh, than 0 0.99. So that's how I guarantee a 99% probability for this question. Now let's go ahead and do an extension of this question where it's exactly the same, except we want at least two tails instead of at least one. And because of that slight change in the question, unfortunately, it causes a slightly different working out to be used. Um, so we can't actually use the working out that we did before and I'll show you why algebraically. So again, it's exactly the same scenario. We have n is equal to n, that's unknown. We have probability of success of one half for tails and x is greater or equal to two instead of x is being greater or equal to one. So mathematically, this is gonna be probability x is greater or equal to two is equal to 0 0.99. And then instead of one minus x is equal to zero, I go one minus the probability of x being equal to zero. And I also have to minus the probability of x being equal to one. So I have to get rid of both of those things because both of those things added together are the complements of greater or equal to two equals a 0 0.99. And maybe when you look at this equation, you can start to see a bit of a problem, right? If we apply the uh, binomial distribution formula to both of these, what's gonna happen is this is gonna be very basic. Th if I just recycle this from the previous part, this was one half to the power of n. But this one is where it gets a bit more confusing because if I try and evaluate this one, I get nc1 multiplied with one half to the power of one multiplied with one half to the power of n minus one which is equal to 0 0.99. And you might be thinking, oh, isn't it just the same thing? Well, kind of. We actually have an n term on the outside. nc1 becomes n, and this becomes n multiplied with 1 half to the power of 1 multiplied by 1 half to the power of n minus 1. This is actually a pretty simple case because both of the base numbers are the same, so they actually multiply to the same number. But you can see that this added term here adds a lot more complexity to this problem. So this is actually an equation that most likely is not solvable by your calculator. So we actually have to think of an alternative method to solve for the n value. And it's a pretty self-explanatory method. If I go to the calculator here, what I can do is a very simple case of trial and error. Okay, and unfortunately it is a bit tedious, but we can make it a lot faster for ourselves with more efficient guesses. What I mean by more efficient guesses is that I already know that seven trials for at least one tail is gives me a 99% probability, okay? So I know that my number is gonna be a lot higher than n because this time I don't wanna cap, I don't wanna guarantee at least one tail, I wanna guarantee at least two. So I expect the trials to be a lot higher in that case. And I could show you that if I just change the minimum, actually let's just do this from scratch just to make it a bit clearer. If I go distribution discrete binomial CDF, if I go from two to seven, so the same solution that I had from previous, probability of success 0.5, 93%. So I'm just gonna to jump to 10, just so I have a feeling. Okay, so 10 is nearly there. I actually haven't done this question before. I'm doing it, I'm showing you exactly how I would do it. And then I just change this from 10 to 11 and I get 99.4%, which is guaranteeing a 99% probability. So using trial and error, I can skip all these steps. I can just go straight from here to a solution I just screw Harry here, straight from there to a solution of n is equal to 11. And the good thing about this method is that I don't have to round anything because I'm not getting a numerical answer. I'm using trial and error, which means that I'm only going to use whole numbers anyway because that is what my solution is expected to be with. Now, one thing I wanted to bring up was the fact that I changed these numbers very quickly, okay? And the reason why I changed these numbers very quickly and I was able to answer this question very fast is because I started off with two and seven. So you kind of have to know what these variables represent. And the way of knowing what these variables represent is by going to the function and I can see the order that these boxes are in is the same order that the function uses. So the first value is lower bound, the second value is upper bound, this is the number of trials and pos is the probability of success. So I can see here, if I wanna change my upper bound from seven to eight, I have to change the upper bound of the values, but I also change the number of trials as well. And obviously in this case, because X is greater or equal to two, the upper bound is going to be the same as the number of trials because I'm saying X is greater or equal to two. So I can only go up the maximum number of, so, um, tr the maximum number of tails I can have is, is the number of trials that I have. 
So I have to think about the, I have to think about this kind of logically and tell myself that those numbers have to be the same. So that's why whenever I change the number of trials, which is this number, let's say I go eight to 10, I have to change the upper bound solution as well because x is greater or equal to two. So I can see here, 10, I got that. So then I just change both of these numbers. So 11, 11, and I get my right solution. But if you took the long way and had to go through all these menus again and include all these numbers again, it's a lot of recycled work that wastes a lot of time. And that's why when people do calculator questions, they don't do it efficiently because they don't know these shortcuts. But you know, I'm here, I'm here to show you these shortcuts and I'm here to help you learn these things. Just a bit, I'm not sure if you guys have this one yet, if you guys have seen this one. It might not be out yet. We do it in seasons, right? We do it when people, we think people would find it relevant. These types of tricks are in the book. Um, if the book's out, link should be somewhere, uh, TikTok bio or Instagram bio. If not, then um, we have the, all these free resources on YouTube to help you out with these things anyway.